All right, we're ready to get going. Um, we'll start with a opening statement from you, and then we will uh, have them raise their hands to the Zoom call, and I'll call on them, and we'll get going. Oh, great. Hey, yeah, uh, thanks, everybody, for coming uh, on the uh, on this occasion. Uh, uh, I just want to uh, thank everybody for uh, for being so supportive over, you know, my tenure here. It's my 15th year as a GM. Uh, you know, with my new extension, you know, I'll be here for a long, long time. But it's been a pleasure uh, interacting with uh, with all of you. Uh, hopefully that uh, I, I've been true to my words, you know, since I've get, since I've been here to, you know, to be always be honest with you and to never lie to you. But uh, at the same time, not be able to share some some uh, things with you. So, uh, uh, you know, that's kind of the way I like to do business and, uh, and and really appreciate and respect, you know, what you people do for a living. So. Uh, with that said, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, I'm honored and, uh, and flattered to, uh, to have this extension. Uh, you know, it's an honor uh, that uh, the Lerner family has entrusted me for so many years with uh, the keys to the franchise. Uh, I hope I've been a good caretaker for them uh, uh, thus far and, and uh, hopefully continue to, uh, you know, bring respect and prominence to the, to the Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, area and to the Nationals. Uh, my goal is, to, is, is like the, the rest of ownership and our front office is to, is to put out a, a product that uh, the fan base can be proud of and that, uh, and that, you know, we win a lot of games and we can, we can bring another parade to, uh, to Washington, D.C., uh, and with that, uh, I, I'd like to thank the, the, the Lerner family, you know, the Tannenbaums and the Cohens uh, and the Gottliebs for all their support over the years. And, uh, and uh, most importantly, my, uh, uh, the, you know, the people in baseball operations, the front office, uh, the, the scouts, the player development, the guys who grind out with me uh, uh, day in and day out, year in and year out. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't uh, be where we're at without them. So with that, I'll take your questions. All right, thank you, sir. We'll start with Mark Zuckerman, MassInSports.com. Hey, Mike, congrats. Um, you've basically been here through the entire, you know, every phase that this organization has been through uh, over the years. For you, how significant and important was it to be here for trying to complete this next phase that you're in, to, to see this thing through? Well, you know, you go through the dog days of the, the rebuild uh, and, you know, you just hope to get an opportunity to, you know, have some of the glory uh, that, you know, the rebuild brings you. And, th you know, that's kind of was my thought process. You know, it, it's never fun to, to rebuild. No, no general manager or field manager wants to, you know, you know, loves the word rebuild because rebuild usually means you're losing a lot of games for, you know, a, a significant amount of years. Uh, this will be my second rebuild. So, you know, we've gone through our share of losing, but it's all worth it for that, you know, that eight, 10 year run of, of excellence and competitiveness and, and uh, you know, playing competitive games at the end of the season uh, and, and all the strife, uh, all the strife and struggles that, that you go through, you know, can't even be measured uh, uh, to the, the glory that you have that when, you know, that last out, the 27th out of that game, game seven of the world series, uh, uh, you know, uh, goes into the guy's mitt. So uh, uh, that, that's why it was so important to me to, uh, you know, to, to, to be here, to see this through and, and to, uh, you know, hopefully see a, another succession to, uh, to be a, uh, a really competitive team and a really competitive division and, uh, and to, uh, and to win another ring for the Nationals fan base. And, you know, this isn't the first extension you signed <clears throat> with the learners, um, but it is the first time you've done so when, there was the possibility that they might sell the team at some mm -hmm. point. What kind of assurances did you get from them or want to get from them about their commitment now moving forward? You know, I've, I've never spoken to them about their commitment to, and if they're going to sell the team and that type of thing. The, the, I've never seen the Lerner family and ownership more involved and more focused and, and more into this thing than I've seen, than I've seen this year uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, you know, believe me when, when, uh, when reports come out that uh, they've got one foot in and one foot out, that's not the people I'm dealing with on a daily basis. Uh, these guys are into it. Uh, they're into every step of this rebuild. They're looking forward to uh, to coming out the other end and to and to you know start winning some games and start being a a contender in in this league and to and to you know put up some championship banners again. I I've, I see no evidence whatsoever of uh, of this fan base, in particular Mark Lerner, you know being you know uh, uh, half in and half out. They're all in. They want to win. And uh, and I, I have I have no. Uh, I have no thought process of them wanting to get rid of the team and sell it. 
Uh, we'll go to Bobby Blanco, massivesports.com. Hey, Mike, congratulations. Um, just, I know you can't control the exact timing of it, but just overall, how exciting is it to announce it today when you have a major league team playing um, a little bit better uh, and you have um, one of your first round picks, former first round picks, making his major league debut tonight? How exciting is it for the franchise as a whole? Well, I mean, the, those two things you just you just mentioned are very exciting to me. You know, the the extension, I, I always felt, you know, I was always confident that, that it was going to happen. Uh, you know, it, it was just a uh, was just, you know, something that we just we just never got around to getting the the final deal done. So, uh, uh, you know, I thought, uh, I, you know, as far as the timeline goes, I thought it was important to get Davey done, you know, because the the the, the the chemistry in the clubhouse and uh, and a, and a lame duck manager with three months is is not the way you want to go through this thing and and uh, and be grinding out and teaching players and and developing players at the big league level. That had to be done, and I'm glad that I got that done. Uh, you know, uh, sooner rather than later. I was always confident about my deal. Uh, you know, as far as coming today, I, I you know I think that's a, a coincidence that uh, that Rutt Rut is going to take the mound today. I'm happy. I'm happy about that. I'm happy about his progression and, and his development. I think he's earned the 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 opportunity to pitch in the big leagues. It's going to be fun to see him, you know, uh, you know, pitch a couple of times in the big leagues before the season ends. So uh, uh, the uh, the team's playing uh, better than expected. Uh, it's it's not, uh, you know, I I, will, I don't uh, think that it's a a successful season, but it's very encouraging season. Uh, you know, nobody wants to aim to win seventy games in the season. We want to win ninety seven games in the season. So that's that's our goal. Uh, that's always been our goal. But this is a, a a good step in the right direction to that. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, what's coming down the what's coming down the pike and and uh, the players that uh, are going to be the next core group of of, uh, of the of the championship team that uh, that plays in uh, Nationals Park. Uh Andrew Golden, Washington Post. Hey, Mike, uh, congrats. Um, how how would you assess just your overall team's performance at the big league level this year? Um, and how does that impact how you view the rebuild moving forward and also how you approach the offseason? I think that uh, I think the, the season it, it, I've seen a lot of improvement from a lot of players, which is important, especially the young players uh, that, you know, important to me is just take the next step. You know, we, we had uh, I, I think you've seen the next step that uh, that are some of our young pitchers have taken Gore, uh, Gray. Uh, Irvin, th those guys at the big league level have taken the next step. You've got relief pitchers in the bullpen that have taken the next step. Uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, we, we've, we've more or less developed the back end of a bullpen, you know, really from scratch. When you, you talk about Finnegan, the way he was obtained and, and Harvey, the way he was obtained, Weems, the way he was obtained, those players were developed here at the big league level uh, by our coaches. So we're, we're, we're proud of that. We're proud of the young position players that we've amassed at the big league level. Uh, we know what's coming, uh, you know, at the minor league level and the prospect level. Uh, but uh, you know, when you see the improvement uh, uh, of Ruiz and Abrams uh, and Lane Thomas uh, and and you infuse, you know, some ex some young prospects with young, and you know, and we're we're seeing what a twenty five year old Kaboom is is going to do, uh, and you know now uh, Louis Gonzalez, uh, Louis uh, Garcia is back in the uh, in the big leagues. That's an exciting young team. Uh, you know, you put you put that together with with the Alus of the world, uh, and uh, and then the the Woods and the Cruises and the Houses and and that type of thing, and you can see the, why why there's excitement uh, not only in our organization but uh, but uh, you know with the with the fan base because you know they see the, this timeline you know coming to fruition, they see the end of this of this uh, rebuild tunnel, if you will, and uh, you know we we've been through this before, so there, there's a uh, there's a timeline and there's a, there's a there's a blueprint to uh, how this thing works out and and uh, and we hope that uh, uh, this this uh, this rebuild mirrors the, the last rebuild and we can get to uh, uh, another decade of dominance in the very near future. And I know that I know that um, that the minor that when you're talking about minor league success, that's not fully based on wins or losses. How, how do you assess your minor league players, how they're doing well and, and what, what shows you're trending in the right direction? I think that you know you, you could see uh, you could see when a player goes from a ball to the big leagues in one season you can see the progression there you can see when you've got when you've got several 20 year olds and 21 year olds at the double a level and playing well uh, with that exciting team there at Harrisburg I, I think that you you can see you know several picks from the 23 draft that have, that have uh, that have played uh, performed uh, very very well in a very short uh, uh, very short sample size uh, you know we have uh, 
know, we have evaluators out evaluating our own system, uh, you know, all the time. We really, uh, we really think that, uh, that, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of players that are going in the right direction. You know, you know, we all know about the elite high level, uh, type of, uh, type of players, but, uh, when you've got summit rounders and 24th rounders and fourth rounders that are, that are making impacts at the big league level already, I think that, uh, that shows, you know, what we've done as far as depth in the draft and depth in our development system. I'll go to Jessica Camerato, LB.com. Congratulations, Mike. Um, I'm wondering, what are your short-term and long-term goals for this organization? Well, the short-term goals this year is to finish finish really strong uh, the last handful of uh, series, and uh, and for the young players to keep progressing and to and to finish the season uh, healthy, moving in the right direction, and preparing for the off season and then for spring training. And I think that's the that's the short-term goal. Uh, the mid the the mid goal is to is to continue this this uh, this rebuild process in a, in a positive way to have uh, to have our good young players uh, take take the next step in their progression, uh, be it if it's a winter league or if it's an Arizona fall league or if it's a coming to spring training. And they just continue the uh, the success rate that we've had uh, in, in our minor league system with these with these uh, uh, elite process. Uh, and we've gone from uh, from a, a minor league uh, minor league system. Uh, that had a lot of minor league players at the big league level, but as far as prospects and depth at the minor league level was was short because we were uh, you know in uh, in a competitive major league uh, uh, balance for about ten years. So we utilize we utilize a lot of our prospect capital to continue to win at the big league level. We've replenished that. We think that uh, you know we have one of the, one of the better, deeper, uh, more impactful systems in the game, which we will use uh, at our big league level in, in the near future to help us uh, get back to a championship caliber club. When you also said that you're encouraged by what the team has done this season, what criteria are you looking at that point to signs of encouragement? Is it specific areas of play, statistics, overall performance? I, I think it's I think it's a, a, a combination of all those things. So you know we all like the, the the statistical end of it. That's that's fairly easy to to read and recognize. Uh, but I look at it w w uh, with uh, much more of a microscope. I I look at how, what's the preparation of the players. Are, are they do they have a routine like a uh, like a major leaguer? Are they becoming major league players? Uh, you know before our very eyes. Are they overmatched at this level? What is what is the uh, what is the thought process and and the mindset of a player? that goes over 12 uh, uh we all know the mindset of a guy that's you know four for ten uh, but uh, you know how do they handle these how do they handle the ebbs and flows uh, of, of a major league season and i think the biggest thing is, is is how i judge it is how do you get through the season uh you know we've we've got we've got young pitchers like gray and gore and urban who we've really taken uh uh a painstakingly uh uh have taken our time with them and, and made sure that they got through the season at a, at a pitch count uh, and an innings count that we are comfortable with. And I think that that is, that's going well. And you'll see players like Abrams and Ruiz and, and Garcia who have never played you know, at th this, this many games uh, day after day after day, every day, uh, like Elaine Thomas has a, and, uh, and got through the season. So that's, that's a big part of it is, is getting through the season healthy and, and, and successfully and, and going into the off season with a good mindset and a good frame of mind to really get to work and, and improve on this season going into next. Howard Magno, uh, baseball, baseball prospectus. Hey Mike, congratulations. Um, just to touch on what you were talking about a little bit uh, just now, when you talked about kind of the core um, players, you know, whether it was Ruiz or Abrams, uh, you put Lane Thomas in that group. And I'm wondering if you see him there, you know, obviously somebody who's still pre-arb and same thing, but a similar question with Joey Manises, who's obviously older, you know, at 31, but is also pre-arb in that way. Just curious how you see the two of them fitting into your future core group. Well, I think they're they're both going to get an opportunity to uh, to fit into it. Uh, just you know, uh, you know, each player develops at their own rate, and it, it, once you develop, you know, once you develop and you get to the big leagues and you perform at the big league level, that's what it's all about. So, you know, to me, Lane Thomas is a young twenty seven year old uh, that's had a, a terrific season for us. He's a toolsy player that has performed at the big league level. Uh, he's he's a guy that's shown some leadership in the clubhouse. Uh, you know, he can he can do a lot of things for you on the on the baseball field. And Joey Manessis is is kind of the 
epitome of, of you know hitting with running runners in scoring position and and producing and producing in big moments. So uh, I think that you know, both of those both of those players as as far as as far as chronological age may be a little older than than you know what you're looking for at, looking for at a core group. Uh, but as far as baseball baseball major league performance time i think they're you know they they both have a chance to, to fit in for us uh now with that said we you know we are one of the youngest teams uh, uh in the major leagues this year and uh, and you know we are uh, we're we're going to uh, uh, we've got we've got players chop you know chopping at the bit to, to get to the big leagues and they're going to be on the heels a lot of a lot of these big league players that are currently on the roster. So that's what this thing is all about: competition at the highest level, and and uh, you're bringing the best 26 north and uh, and you know try and compete in, a, in a, what is a very very long marathon of a season. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, we'll go to Barry Sperluga, Washington Post. I'm not a Zoom practice. I can't raise my hand. Um, Mike, uh, you do have two big hires to make in terms of leading your international uh, program and um, the amateur scouting, the draft. Uh, what's that process going to look like? Are you going to look outside the organization? Um, and do you have kind of a timeline? Uh, you know, the timeline is we're going to start, you know, in earnest. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're going to look inside the organization. We have some internal candidates that uh, that make sense to to discuss their their thoughts uh, and their you know, their, their global vision of, of each department. And we're going to look outside the, the organization also to see if we can get the brightest and, and, and the best uh, the best uh, uh, person available. Thank you. Uh, Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Hey, Mike, congrats. Uh, just piggybacking on that a bit, um, can you maybe just walk us through the reasoning behind some recent changes you guys have made on the scouting side, both international, pro scouts, um, some amateur too, just kind of what your what your vision was there and why those changes came about? Well, changes happen every year. You know, every team goes through it. This is the time of year where there, there, is, there is changes being made. So we took a deep dive in, in how we could be more effective uh, uh, in all of our departments. Uh, and I, I think that... Uh, you know, we've had a little bit of an organizational restructuring and, uh, you know, uh, we're going to, you know, some some people are going to be reassigned. Some people are going to be replaced. Some people are going to do have, have some, uh, you know, a little different, uh, little different uh, job descriptions. Uh, but uh, but suffice it to say that, uh, you know, that, you know, we're trying to strike our objective is to strike a, a balance in uh, uh, in in our scouting player development and front office system. You know, uh, we've made a few huge investments in, uh, in manpower and brain power and technology over the last couple of years. We want we want to utilize that to the, to the best of our ability and and, uh, and really take that to the next level. When, when you guys revamped your player development side before the 22 season, and you talked over the winter maybe about new ideas some outside voices and more technology, do you see this sort of as a similar process you guys are taking on the scouting side almost? Is that is that fair to say? I think that uh, you know there's uh, there's going to be there's different ways of of scouting you know uh you know I'm a scout guy I'm a scout you know I've been a, I was a scout for 25 years before I before I got into the front office and uh, and I, I think that they're vital to uh, vital to the organization uh, and uh, I and we will be we will be utilizing them uh, you know greatly like we always have been uh, but there's going to be a balance and there's going to, there's going to be uh, there's going to be a, a a hybrid and a marriage of all the uh, all the different aspects of evaluating players and I think that uh, that at the end of the day we you know we'll come out with a a process that has uh, that has worked well for us in the past but I think it'll just be refined and and uh, and uh, uh, you know I've done it at a bit a little bit of a higher level. And then, and then just on that, you mentioned your scout, obviously that's your background, um, to stay in your position for as long as you have and have success, what kind of personal growth has it taken to sort of learn these new ways of, you know, the game is being played to kind of, you know, meld those traditional maybe strategies with some of the new age stuff just for you personally, kind of have, what's that process been like? Well, I, I think it's been fairly seamless. I mean, we've always used information. Now we're gathering information at, 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 it, for, at different ways, uh, but all the information, there's a, there's this, there is a, uh, a warehouse of information, and uh, and uh, I think that what I have learned is that uh, I defer to the people who are uh, akin to deciphering this information, dissecting it, and then feeding it to me. And uh, with that dissected and, and and filtered information, you know, I I think we can make better decisions. And uh, I think that uh, you know we're we're in a place you know now with the Nationals, we have uh, we have a, a great balance of, of both. We have we have a, a a great analytical team. We have a great 
eyes on the players uh, team with scouts and player development guys and front office people that uh, that uh, you know can do a whole bunch of different jobs and uh, you know the, uh, the 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 job description of uh, uh, of some of these uh, people are uh, will be the same, but but their their interaction and their and their their actual jobs will will differ and will be expanded. Thank you. And David Aldridge, the athletic. <clears throat> Muted, David. Sorry, it's my first Zoom. Apparently, <laughs> sorry, Mike. Uh, congratulations. Um, uh, I know the priority going forward will be to get as many of you, your younger guys up here as soon as possible. But in terms of what you plan to do this winter, not so much at specific positions, but do you think you will be uh, more active just generally at a higher level of free agent? Yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, that, that two, the two parts of that question, uh, the, the first part is, you know, we're, no player will get here before it's time, as as they say uh, in the commercials. You know, they, you know, they, everyone has to, everyone has their own developmental uh, uh, time timeline. Uh, we we'll, we bring players up when when we believe they're they're ready to impact us at the at the big league level. Uh, no matter if they're eighteen or nineteen, like we've done in the past, or if they're twenty seven. So uh, uh, you know, we we will uh, we'll develop men develop players at their own at their own pace, uh, and and we'll get them to the big leagues. Uh, you know, when, when we think they. Need Need to be at the big leagues, and they'll help us, uh, regardless of what their age is. Uh, as far as this off season, we're we're certainly going to take a deep dive into where uh, our weaknesses are and where we need to get better, where our where where we lack depth, uh, both at the big league level and at the minor league level. That will feed that uh, that will feed that uh, that position. So I think that we'll be uh, active like we have been in the past. I don't know at what level yet that we will uh, that we will interact in it. Uh, uh, but uh, suffice to say that uh, we uh, we want to uh, we want to improve our team. We we're not satisfied with uh, with the jump from last year to this year in victories, uh, and we want to you know our, our goal is to win. And and uh, there's no time like the present. All right, and we will finish with Bobby Blanco, MassiveSports.com. Hey, Mike, you guys uh, promoted um, Yo-Yo Morales and Andrew Pignoli at the Double A uh, yesterday. Two guys who were just drafted in this year. Um, what did you see from them that made you uh, make that decision, and uh, were able to promote them all the way that high? And what's it like seeing them join the team with the likes of Dylan Cruz, Robert Hassel, James Wood, Trey Lipscomb, Brady House, and all those guys? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you know, it, it gives them an extra week of playing. Yeah, you know, I think they've uh, they certainly. Uh, uh, will handle the level. I think they they handled the you know you know both A levels fine, and uh, I figured that uh, that you know play placing them there it gets them another week of baseball, and uh, you know we'll see we'll see how they handle that for, in a, in a very short uh, in a very short uh, sample size, but I think that uh, they, they'll handle it, and uh, and you know they're they're going to eventually be there you know next year anyway. So uh, it was a, I think it was a good time to get them there, get their feet wet at that level for a week. It gives them another week uh, of at bats. All right, and sorry, one more. We'll go to Jesse Doherty, Washington Post. Hey, sorry, sneaking down to the gun here. Um, Mike, saw you address the straw situation at length on the junkies. Um, mm -hmm. Just just wanted to ask real quick, um, maybe what your view of how that played out was and then um, and kind of what you see as the next steps now um, in terms of whether Steven and, and you guys are expected to reach an agreement before the offseason, given that you guys could use that roster spot on the 40-man or kind of how you see it from here. I, I think it was uh, much ado about nothing. I think it was, you know, uh, unnecessary controversy. Uh, you know, it was you know, you know, initiated by uh, a lot of miscommunication, a lot of misinformation. So I think it's unfortunate, uh, and I think it was unnecessary. Uh, but you know, the play, the the player is is the one that retires. You know, teams don't retire players; players reti retire. And uh, and both sides know how these things play out when when there's a when there's a player that uh, that's considering retiring on the 40 man roster there's you know there's a protocol that uh, that's in the CBA that uh, that has to be uh, that has to be undertaken before we can make we we can do make any uh, announcements or, or 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 take the next step appreciate it thank you